All right, so today I want to briefly talk about a couple of things that you'll need to do to get your data ready to run your analyses next week. So the first thing that I want to talk about is dealing with the issue of inter-rater agreement. Now, inter-rater reliability is generally measured based on correlation. So essentially how correlated are two raters scores on a particular variable. And remember that correlation is like a Pearson's product moment correlation and it's used a lot in the literature. But for this particular type of data, it's by far not the best statistic that we should use. There are actually a ton of different ways to measure inter-rater reliability. And some better ways are to use a Kappa coefficient, a Spearman's Brown, or an intraclass correlation. But for this class, when we look at inter-rater agreement, we essentially need to know the percentage of times that the raters agreed. And one of the reasons why we look at inter-rater agreement in this class and for meta-analysis is we can't have one of you coding an effect size for a particular article as 0.27 and then another of you coding it as 0.32 in our database. Our scores need to be unified and exactly the same when we put them in for analysis in order to get out our output. And so we're going to be looking at inter-rater reliability with percent agreement for the purposes of this class. Now, I do want to mention at the outset here that you will see some literature that says, you know, don't use percent agreement to look at inter-rater agreement. Percent agreement is the wrong way to go. You'll see that when you submit papers to journals for publications, sometimes that reviewers might kind of have a hoity-toity attitude and say that, you know, well, percent agreement isn't exactly the most sophisticated measure that you could have used here, and you should have used a Krippendorf's alpha or, you know, something to that effect. There's all sorts of things that reviewers might say, but Ultimately, it is a good measure of inter-rater agreement because it gives you a tangible way of looking at what is the percentage of times overall that our raters agreed. And the argument that we just talked about that some people pose for not using percent agreement when looking at inter-rater agreement that's actually the case, so that's true that we shouldn't use percent agreement if what we're looking at is data that is binary in nature. So if we're looking at a variable that's either going to be present or absent, if that's how we're coding it, then percent agreement is actually a, a pretty bad way to go. And the reason for that is because when we have that coding schema of either present or absent, with that schema alone, there's going to be a 50% chance that you're going to agree simply by chance alone. And so that's going to exaggerate the amount of agreement that you calculate. But for, you know, the, the types of data and variables that we're looking at are for, you know, by and large, they're going to be categorical data like ethnicity where you're coding, you know, one of seven different possibilities. So percent agreement is actually fabulous for the types of data that we're going to be coding for the most part. So what do we need to do this week? All right, I am going to walk you through what you need to do to prep individually before your inter-rater meeting. Then we're going to also discuss what should happen during the inter-rater meeting. And then 
after your inner meeting is over. So I'll be walking you through everything that you need for this week. The first thing that I want you to do individually is to download and print out your first four initial codes. Now you want to make sure that you pull the copies of those initial codes that you submitted that don't have your grades on them from me. So you want them to be clean that just show exactly what you coded for your initial code. You also do want to make sure that you can access the copies that I graded that does show you the feedback from me so that you have that during the meeting to reference and help guide your discussions when you're deciding your final codes. So keep them accessible somewhere, but download and print out your first four initial codes. And then secondly, I want you to download and print out the four blind codes that match your four initial codes. So not the four codes that you blind coded, because those are for different articles. I want you to download and print out the four blind codings of your four initial codes. And you are not necessarily going to have access to those because they're, you know, from your other group members. So if you guys did not create a common cloud for storage yet, you'll need to share your codings with one another either by email or you can also create a cloud storage file to share them. So once you've got those out in front of you, I want you to place them side by side in front of you and I want you to compare them. And in comparing them, I want you to highlight, um, I say in yellow on here just because, you know, yellow highlighters are the most accessible ones that you can find, but you can also see easily through the highlighting, but whatever color you prefer is fine. But I want you to highlight the actual codes on both the initial and blind code form when you did not agree. All right, so for example, let's say that you notice that for pub year that you both coded a different year. You want to highlight that on both of those forms and the reason for highlighting it is it is so that it draws your attention to it during the inner meeting because you don't want to have to be comparing during the meeting because that's going to waste a lot of time. If you can compare these ahead of time and know how many variables you have to discuss for each article, this saves your group a lot of time. So you're going to do that for each article, comparing initial to blind code and highlighting what's different. And then individually, you're also going to want to download a copy of the Innerator Agreement template spreadsheet that's in the module this week. And each of you individually is going to fill out this spreadsheet based on the four articles that you are comparing before the meeting. All right, so it may be helpful for your group to fill out this Innerator Agreement spreadsheet with your variables and then share the blank spreadsheet with everyone in your group, but you'll want to download a copy of it individually and place a hash mark in each column for every variable every time you disagreed for a particular variable. And so you're only going to add a hash mark in the spreadsheet when you disagreed on a code. And you'll notice that there's a few columns for adding hash marks. And essentially when you're doing this one-on-one -on -one before the meeting, you're only going to be using up to one column by yourself because you're comparing four codes and each column only accounts for five hash marks max. And because you're only comparing four articles to start before the meeting, the most, the, you know, the most amount of times that you could disagree that you're going to track individually is four. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you the spreadsheet here in just a minute. But if you, so here's another point that I want to make as well. If you had a situation where you coded a full text article, or maybe, you know, a few, that you coded it, you submitted it, I gave you feedback that it didn't quite have the types of data that we would need to compute an effect size and so it therefore gets excluded, or you determined in your review that 
that this article gets excluded, those articles do not need to be discussed at this meeting. You don't have to do anything with them. They don't get discussed at the inter-rater meeting. They do not get entered into the database. Nothing. They get kicked out. So you completely ignore them. So time comes for the inter-rater meeting. And so what does that generally look like? So you're going to meet with your team and you're going to discuss the discrepancies that you've already prepared by highlighting them on your initial and blind code forms so that they stand out to you when you're leading the discussion. And each of you is going to lead the discussion on the four articles that you were the initial coder on. And you're just going to rotate among the three of you in the group. All right, so again, kind of like I mentioned on the last slide, if one of you or a couple of you had an article or articles that didn't qualify for analysis, I'm asking that you reach out to your group members and you take on another coding from someone else in your group. And you want to make sure that you can try and as best as you can help equally, equally distribute the number of codings that you each are responsible for leading the discussion on and then entering in that data into the final database for your group. Now, you know, you might say, well, how am I going to lead the discussion on that? You do your best. So basically you're in charge of looking at, you know, bringing the group together identifying which codes were not agreed upon and then you can of course help direct the discussion and ask the initial and blind coder to chime in and sort of provide their reasoning as to why they coded one or the other and then of course you all decide on what the final code will be but I'm asking that you step in and you help your group in that regard if that was a situation for you in your group with articles that were not viable. And throughout these discussions, you and your team are going to come up with the final code. And once that's decided upon, you'll be entering that into the database. And when creating your final codes, all right, so here are some helpful instructions. I want you to download and print four copies of the coding manual for the iterator meeting so that you have those ready to go. And as those codes are being discussed, when you are leading your articles that you're discussing, you are going to be the person to enter in the final code on that new sheet so that there's no confusion as to what the final code is that you move forward with as a team. And I'm going to I'm going to say this, so we do not want to be erasing codes on either the initial or the blind coding form because that gets messy as all get out. And we need to be able to maintain a record of what the initial and blind codes were should we ever need to go back and reference that in the future. So you definitely want to make a new final coding form for each article that keeps us the most organized. And individually, you can enter in that data electronically after the meeting. So you would, each of you is going to enter in the four articles that you initially coded, those final codes, so that everyone can have access to the final codings for each article. And then lastly, you're going to finalize your data. So, like I just mentioned, each of you is responsible individually for entering in the final codes from your initial codings. And in order to do that, you're, as a group, you're going to submit one database together at the end of the week. And so you're going to need to coordinate with your group members as to who enters in data for their articles first, who it gets passed on to next, etc., etc. So let me show you the iterator spreadsheet that you're going to be using. So this is the iterator agreement template spreadsheet that you're going to download from the module this week. And you and your group are going to create a spreadsheet that matches 
your exact group variables. All right, so you may have to enter, delete a few categories over here on the left of variables, but it's basically set up for you so that the structure is here. So you would enter your group name up here, and then here on the left-hand side, you've got all of your variable names. All right, so you can see here that publication year, so what it's called in your coding manual is listed there. And then in the brackets behind it is the name that the variable has in your master database slash what will be entered into CMA. So the variable name that you'll be looking at when interpreting data output. So you want to make sure that both of those names are there on that variable column on the left hand side. All right. And here are the three columns where you're going to be tracking the number of times that you disagreed. All right, so that's what those columns are for. And the easiest way to do that is just use a hash mark. So I just use a capital I, right? That's what looks like a hash mark. And you want to use a maximum of five in each column just so that it's easy to read. So 5, 15, or 5, 10, 15, because that's how you usually keep track of hash marks is a maximum of five at a time. But those are the columns that you use to mark whenever you disagreed on something. All right. And then here is where we tally the total number of times we disagreed then we figure out the total number of times we agreed and then here is the column where we have the total number of articles now you'll notice that i've got 12 here all the way down but your group may be in a situation where you had i don't know one or two articles that actually ended up being excluded so you would need to change that number here to whatever number of maximum viable articles that you have to look at and that's what this number is going to be here in this final column. So, you know, one of the ways that you do that is by looking over here on the right, I've got a little chart here for you to follow and fill in, you know, who is coder A, B, and C, and then how many articles each you had, and then how many total articles you had to compare. And so let me show you how this would work just a little bit. So remember that each of you individually is going to be filling out one of these spreadsheets before you come to the iterator meeting because you're just going to add in out of the four articles that you're coding that data of how many times you highlighted for a particular variable when you both did not agree. All right, so let's say that you know, of the four articles that one of you sat down to review before the meeting, there were three times that you disagreed on publication year. All right. So that would mean that you would enter in three times that you disagreed. And because you individually are looking at four articles before you all came together as a group, that means that you're going to have one time that you agreed out of those four times. Now this can stay the same for now. Um, you're not going to need to calculate the percent agreement or anything. You just want to calculate these first few columns before the meeting so that this saves you guys some time. And then once you come together, you can compile these numbers together and then it'll be quicker for you to calculate the percent agreement and finish up the spreadsheet. So let's say that, you know, we had one instance of disagreeing on the publication type. So that would mean one total disagreement and that would mean three times that we agreed of the four articles that we're reviewing. So that's basically how this spreadsheet works. It's really simple and really straightforward. All right. And 
You also want to be tracking the overall number of variables that you're looking at. So you'll have to look on the left hand side. Once you enter in all the variables that you've got based on what's in your coding manual, you can tally that up and change this over here. And you want to make sure that you calculate not only a percent agreement value for each variable individually, but you also want to calculate the overall percent agreement of all of those variables. And so I've provided you with those columns and what goes in each column there as well. And then you also want to track your most problematic variable. So whichever variable you find has the lowest percent agreement, you definitely want to track that. And you may have a few that you want to talk about. It may be something that you decide to talk about in the discussion if it lends itself well to you know, trying to better conceptualize the variable in future studies, in you know, providing recommendations to primary researchers of how they're conceptualizing it because it's hard to look at, hard to conceptualize what, whatever may be the case. You definitely want to be tracking those most problematic variable or variables for your group. And that's that. So good luck this week with your iterator meetings and fight it out. Decide your final codes. <laughs>